Hey guys, I just got back from another expedition to pick up some goodies. Got some rather interesting items. One in particular is really, really cool. It's something I had read about and seen in photos a few years back and completely forgot they even existed. Never expected to, to see one in person, let alone own one, but we'll get to that a little later. So I received an email last weekend from some local, I guess you'd call them dealers. I suppose they're collectors too, but they do more, more selling than I do for sure. Saying that uh, there was somebody in Chicago who was selling off a property and they had to get rid of some stuff. And uh, there were some old TVs and testing equipment I thought I might be interested. So I went over and took a look. Turns out it was one of those combination homes and uh, storefronts and I think they did odds and they sold but I don't know I just saw some glass display cases filled with odds and ends but I guess at some point it was kind of a TV radio electronics repair shop now the stuff that was there was pretty darn rough shape the TVs were all taken apart being worked on some were just empty cabinets some empty cabinets with maybe a picture tube and no chassis but Found a few interesting things, so one thing that caught me eye right away is the Sonora Portable. Now, Sonora, you may recall, I uh, recently restored the cabinet for a wooden Sonora from the late 40s. Well, the keys. This is a metal portable. I think I saw one of these on eBay really recently, and this I think might be from the last year they were in business or close to it. Now all the screws are missing in the knobs and it's kind of falling apart, but I think all the key stuff is there, except it's missing the back. And that's a real drag, but you never know, I'll ask around, somebody might have a spare back. It's a two-tone, pink on the front, white on the body, I think it's a pretty cool looking little set. Now there was more stuff there that I took, I mean I just, I can't take everything. There was some test equipment in particular, like a 50's vintage Tektronix scope. Uh, VTVM, um, signal analyzers, and I just, I just couldn't. <laughs> it's tempting as it was, but I think it's some equipment. That box in particular down there, took me a while to figure out what it was till I finally found the label inside. That's kind of neat. And there's another uh, Sprague uh, tester down in there. I'll, I'll pull all this stuff inside and take a closer look. I just got home and I'm exhausted, but I wanted to record some footage right away. Uh, I found some interesting manuals, some kind of uh, vintage stuff like uh, old magazines and catalogs and stuff. Get some odds and ends, knobs and light bulbs and, and such. Uh, this, there were two Sentinel empty cabinets for what must have been 19 inch metal cone sets with doors on them. They're probably beautiful cabinets at some point, but in the basement, they got wet, the veneer delaminated, they were in lousy condition, and there was no chassis, no picture tube, nothing. But at least I was able to salvage the speaker out of one of them. Pretty hefty field coil type, uh, 12 inch, maybe a little bigger. Looks to be in really good shape. Don't have any immediate use for it, but hey, look like a pretty solid speaker. Now this is a seven inch airline portable TV. I've seen many of these over the years on eBay and a few in person. Sentinel made one that was pretty much identical. I think it might have been a Firestone. Well, this is the airline. Just look at the Sonora. It's in rough shape. Um, I know there's at least the, the high voltage covers missing inside. The knobs are missing. The chassis aren't bolted down, so it's flopping around. But, you know, I, I couldn't pass up on it. It's got this kind of wallpapery vinyl coating, but it's in uh, pretty good shape. I think it'll clean up fairly well. If nothing else, hey, I got a 7JP4 picture tube that might be good. But this, this, <laughs> this is the prize. This is what it was, this is what it got me to go over there and take a look. Now, unfortunately, this is in miserable shape. As rough as all the other stuff was I saw, this is so it's both the most valuable, the rarest, and the most trashed of all this stuff. Here's um, a lot of the loose bits and pieces. What happened was, I get, they said it was in beautiful condition, but it got 
water dumped on it. I think a water pipe leaked or something like that. So, first off, I bet a lot of you recognize that, it's a Scott. We've got a big wooden box and a bunch of missing knobs on there. So, what is it? Well, Scott's known for making radios and amps, I believe. I've, I've never owned any Scott stuff. I just see some of it online. and They made chrome-plated chassis and people really drool over their stuff. Uh, so what is this? Well, it's got a channel plate on there. 2 through 13, so hey, looks like a TV. But uh, where's the screen? Where's the speaker? <laughs> well, believe it or not, this is a pop-up rear projection television set. And one thing that's been missing in my collection, all the cool nifty TVs I've found over the years, I've never had a projection set. Had a fantastic opportunity to get one a couple months ago in Whiting, Indiana. Somebody had an RCA 648. I think that was their first projection set. Love to have one someday. It was only 50 bucks. Only problem is, I looked up the service info and it's huge. Like four feet tall, three feet wide, two feet deep, 300 pounds, and I just couldn't. I would have to rent a truck, get some friends, put it into a, I'd have to rent another storage locker. I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. But like I said, I always wanted a projection set. Well, this is as small as you can go and still have a projection set. Now, unfortunately, the cabinet, I mean, it's just god-awful, so we'll see. I mean, maybe I can just repair, get cut some new plywood, re the parts that are bad, or maybe just have an entire new cabinet fabricated from scratch. Here's a look from the other side. So uh, I dismantled some of it partially. So that's, there's the metal back cover and some of the bits and pieces that broke off. This is the screen. So this was hinged. It's upside down right now. So it's hinged and then there were these cardboard light screens on the sides. And then this is a piece of frosted glass. This is the back side, so the projected image would hit the back of this frosted glass and uh, the image would be focused on that. Now I don't know how particularly rare these are, I'm guessing pretty rare and fairly valuable. But uh, I just uh, don't never really see them come up. I just don't want to fold down for some reason. Oh, I see. Here's a look at the other side. So this is one of the key pieces, it's, it's, and it's in good shape, the glass isn't cracked. So this is what you would actually watch. This is the viewing area right here. I think it's 20 inches diagonal. So this is circa like 48, 49. So for that time, uh, I don't think you could get a direct view TV with a picture this big. So projection was the only way to go. All right, now for the rest of it. So, there's the top. This took the brunt of the damage. So, yeah, this, this is completely trashed. The front completely broke off. And this is hinged. This big old piano hinge running the, down the entire back there. And uh, here's a mirror. And... Here are all the chassis. It's kind of neat. There are one, two, three, I think there are four or five distinct chassis that all plug together and can come out individually for being serviced. So there's the... So this may have been made by Scott, but the some of the insides are made by Philips, known in this country as Naroco, and they had a what they called the protogram system, and this was used in a number of different cabinets by different manufacturers. So here's the power supply. Fairly straightforward, tra power transformer, 5U4, some filter caps. 
Here would be the tuner, front end, deflection circuits. Inside this is a flyback, but what's kind of curious is it doesn't generate high voltage. That's just used to drive the deflection yoke. This makes the high voltage. And there's a little thing, a little stub sticking out here. That is the pitcher tube. It's a three inch pitcher tube, a 3NP4. A really odd little base on it, probably because it's European in origin. And that comes up to right here. I can just see the business end of it. The uh, fo little phosphor face down in there. Well, so it's pointing this way. So there must be something in here, some kind of mirror, that redirects the light from going horizontally this way to a straight up vertical out of this hole right here. Then it hits this mirror at a 45 degree angle. And then finally it hits that screen over there. So that's why I was happy that, trash as this may be, the optics look to be intact. The chassis appear to be intact. May not have the knobs, the cabinet may be falling apart, but there's hope this could be made to work. Here's the, so inside here, which is just flopping around, All, none of these chassis are bolted down. Uh, there's a voltage tripler and high voltage oscillator. So I I think this tube runs something in the neighborhood of 20, 25,000 volts. Alright, so I was able to carry this from their basement into my car. and <laughs> I was pretty darn worn out, so I want to recoup my energy a bit and then start bringing this stuff inside. I'll we'll go over it in more detail. Now this is the side that's really bad. This is the runner for that flip-up screen. Solid on this side. This side's pretty trash, so... And this veneer, or this rather this plywood is all delaminated. So I was thinking, first blush, my reaction to this cabinet is, maybe knock off this side and cut a whole new piece of plywood and reattach this runner and re-veneer it. And the entire top, build a new one from scratch. I managed to bring everything up inside except for the Scott TV. I figure I'll start bringing these things one at a time, put them up on the workbench, give them a quick look over. So let's start out with this guy, the Airline 7-inch Portable. This is actually pretty heavy for portable. That's because it has a real power transformer in it. Unlike those Motorola sets that are series strong. Kind of a nifty carrying handle. It's actually molded so it fits real nice in your hand. Airline, which is Montgomery Wards. That's why it has an MW logo up there. All the knobs are gone. Like pretty much everything at this guy's place. Dirty, scuffed. Lettering's raised though, so I'll see how well this cleans up, but theoretically it could be possible to repaint this brown and then do the raised lettering in gold, but it's way down the road. Both sides are in pretty good shape. Also, all the screws are missing that are holding the chassis in. Pretty much another common trait to everything that was at this guy's place. So, I can see the outline. And because the chassis are floating around inside, that's why it's all messed up here and the shafts are not centered and sticking out properly. It's got the back, which is a plus. Really torn up here, I suspect, because this chassis has fallen over and people have tried to close it shut and the shafts have bashed right into this. But. It is just a piece of cardboard stapled onto the back so it could easily be replaced. I was so inclined. Alright, so here's a look inside. So it's a real power transformer. Only their 7 inch set I think I've seen with a real power transformer is uh, the Admiral Bakelite. Hold on one of those. Alright, I'm pretty sure there should be a box over this. That is the high voltage RF coil. I really hope it's good. 
Now that has got me not feeling so warm and fuzzy though. There's a little bit of wire sticking up here loose. Dead spider. Don't care about that. Random high voltage mica cap just floating in space here. No doubt somebody tried to fix this thing. So like the weight of this is just resting on top of the power transformer. I guess this is how the two connect together. Let's plug somehow. That doesn't really seem to want to wrap around and fit on there very easily. Maybe something like that. Uh, it's the two things I'd like to do with this. One is test the CRT, and uh, two, get some screws on this thing, take the strain off of it. Base seems to be on the CRT solid. Looks like a pretty high quality uh, base on it, or socket rather. The uh, Motorola sets, some of them are really, really cheap. Model 94GSE3011B, 175 watts. Alright, so I'm going to work this off and fire up my CR70 and give it a test. That upper chassis just practically fell out of the cabinet, so I just pulled the whole thing right out. And I can see it, I had some work done. All the tubes are missing, and yet again, more screws are gone. So this little sub-assembly here, it's just got two screws holding it in. A whole bunch missing around here. Should be flush and secure like that. So similar to the Motorola VT71 sets, there should be a 1B3 rectifier here with this little feedback coil around it, and there's the high voltage cap. And there's that little bit of wire that's got me concerned that's hanging there. Doesn't look like it's broken off though. So, time will tell. I really wish uh, there was a box around this to protect it. I'm sure that's what all these little screw holes are for all around here. Just for a box that would have gone over that. Well, I'll ask around. You never know what might be out there. This, this stupid thing I'm just going to cut off right now. Looks like a ham style transmitting capacitor. Ford or Pico Farad, only 2500 working volts DC. It's actually not a whole lot for a set like this. So another cap kind of floating here, not going to anything. Well, I guess some people were being thrifty. They would uh, just use whatever they had on hand, whether it was really the proper part or not. It's RCA. 7JP4. Before I test that, let's take a peek underneath the chassis. This thing really doesn't weigh much at all. I think this is aluminum. Really, the only weight here is just the CRT. Okay, selenium rectifiers. There's the high voltage coupling caps. These smaller ones would be for the horizontal, larger ones for the vertical. Actually doesn't look too horrible. And while I got this out, I want to see what the uh, screw size fits in there. I figured I'd probably get that type of screw, and I believe this is what they had on the cabinet, so the screw heads would fit inside that, so wouldn't have been screws like this because these won't fit flush. But for now I just want to stabilize it, so anything that fits and holds I'll go with for now. 
I was wrong about the chassis. It actually uses machine screws. Very common size, so no problem there. Use a little Windex. Cleaned the CRT off. It's looking a whole lot better now. Should look a lot nicer when I put it back in the cabinet. And I got it set up for testing, so let's give this a try. <laughs> Can't really see if the filament's glowing. I don't want to take this apart. So I will just rely on the tester. Feels like it's conducting though. Because one of CRT isn't conducting and the filament voltage goes up higher because there's no load. Should wear some shorts. Yeah, it's coming alive. It's really all I want to know if this thing is dead or not. How well this test is kind of irrelevant compared to other CRTs, the magnetic deflection type. Every 7JP4 I've tested that isn't completely dead shows great emission. What really matters is how much life is left in the phosphor, because these don't have any type of ion trap. So this phosphor on the front gets bombarded with ions continually while it's in operation and they gradually get dimmer and dimmer. The only way to find out for sure is to put it in a working set. Alright, but that is enough for now. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and put it all back together and then pull up the Sonora tabletop uh, metal portable set. Well, the bottom chassis was about ready to fall out too, so I might as well check that one out before I put it back together. So this one has a few tubes left in it. That is one mightily rusty tube shield. So that would be the tuner. I uh, just want to watch for a little cure. So actually, you know, I'm puzzled now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, I replaced a few of the screws here too, so this is more secure now. We got selenium rectifiers up here. We have a power transformer, um, which are usually associated with voltage doublers. So this might be tube filament only, or um, I guess those could be for a full wave rectifier off of the secondary in here, but. Why wouldn't they just stick them on the bottom chassis and use this for the filter cap? I don't know. I'll have to study the schematic. Ah, oh, boy, is that, is that dusty. Alright, let's take a look underneath. Oh, here's the speaker. Looks to be okay. Uh, hmm, another selenium rectifier. Okay. We've got three of them in this set. Let's see. I'm just gonna stay. It's okay. Looks to be, if not all original, pretty darn close to it. These guys are kind of odd. Those look like um, coupling capacitors, like you'd see in the ham radio or something, where the outer part is a shield and the conductor goes straight through the middle. Or maybe those are the, some kind of RF chokes or something, I don't know. Alright, so uh, assuming this coil's good, and maybe I can rig up some kind of aluminum box or find one, I think this set is... Perfectly restorable. I'll have to track down some knobs too. Oh, a little bit of rust, but now that I've got all the new rust removing products, that's no problem. Now, I did find, um, I have a little box of odds and ends I'll pull up too. We'll take a look at that. Uh, and there are definitely some knobs with an airplane on them, which I'm pretty sure are air, air, airline knobs. Don't know if they go with this set or not, but at least the uh, Potentially they are. I finished remounting both chassis with some nice new screws. Everything's tight and secure. All the 
controls are lined up. Screen is a lot cleaner now. There's some scratches in the plastic. I can probably buff those out. Cleaned off the top a little bit, so in other words, it's looking better. Now here's a little tray I picked up that seemed to have knobs and miscellaneous stuff on it. So these are little knobs, probably for clock radios. But these just might work all right in my Filco Predicta Siesta. If not, I've picked up some others that I think will work as well, but these might be closer to the originals. Alright, um, let's see, I found some light bulbs in there. These will work in my Filco 15DX. So the bulb that hangs down inside the speaker box. And here are some of these knobs I was talking about that have airplanes on them. These are probably not right for this set, but I figured, hey, there's a possibility. These are all knurled shafts, and these are not. Let's see what else. No idea. More. Knows. Old school fuse. Dual pot with power switch. These are always a pain to find when you need one. Alright, so the inner one is the turn it for the power. Right, might have some use for that someday. One of these fusistors, probably 4.7 ohms. Push push switch. Huh, be amazing if this is actually the uh, part for a uh, Predicta. It says Admiral Filco in Sylvania and push push, that's the kind you use for Predictas, but this mounting bracket doesn't look right. I can see I can see none of these are going to be right here or knurled. I think that's for Sentinel. It's probably for one of the console TVs that I have. Anybody need a nylon gear with 34 teeth? I have transformer unmarked, not terribly useful. This looks just like the control that I ended up needing to replace on this GE coaxial set. This guy. Oh, no, except that one I believe had a collar with a slot in it for mounting rather than a threaded terminal. <laughs> Even so, could come in handy. Oh. Well, these, are, these are always handy to have. There was a guy looking for some of these recently. These go on backs of sets, like here, for the antenna terminals, and quite often broken or missing on sets. about it for in here, you know, astounding treasures, but uh, you never know when some of this stuff might come in handy. Now here's something I haven't mentioned yet that I almost forgot to take with me when I left. Yeah, bonus uh, thermocouple. I made up needing this for my Williams heaters one of these days. Uh, but this, this is what I wanted to mention. First I just saw this and I immediately recognized it for what it is, which is an early remote control, a Zenith Lazy Bones. 
So you'd sit on your couch with this long wire going to your TV and you'd hit these buttons. I mean it's just channel up and down. I believe that's all it does. A little dirty. It's probably seen a bit of use. But still have the original box. After, uh, so I just saw this at first and then later hunting around I found this. Which is the original box missing the lid. But this is the other part of it. So that plugs into this somehow attaches to your TV and then this is the motor. This would somehow attach to I guess your channel clunker so in place of your knob. I think these were aftermarket add-ons. I mean why else would it be sold in a box like this unless this was a replacement. But uh, I'm not sure what kind of butchery you'd have to do to your TV to get this to attach to where your channel knob used to be. I don't think you'd bolt this on the outside of the cabinet because that would just look horrible, but I'm not sure where you'd stick it inside the cabinet either. But uh, regardless, a neat thing to have. I don't think I'll ever use it on one of my sets, at least not the ones I currently have, but kind of nifty.